Good evening again, and good evening to tonight's demo. So there will be no slides tonight. This will be a demonstration of a pre-release software, which is not in the marketplace yet, but will be in the marketplace very soon. And our presenter tonight is Jose Leon, from, who is Director Engineering at Systel, and who is joining us tonight from Alicante in Spain. And with that, Jose, without further ado, over to you and your demo, and I will just disappear and see you on the other side. Thank you. Okay. Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, well, just a uh, correction. The product is actually on the marketplace, but uh, what I was trying to explain is that the version that I'm going to show uh, is a, a development version with a bit more updates and will be available like uh, next week. Okay, so sorry for the misunderstanding. But you can right now go to the marketplace and, and install the product and try it for yourself. Okay, so sorry for the misunderstanding. I'm going to start by, by sharing the screen and then I'm going to explain you about uh, a bit more about the history of the product and why this product is here. Okay, so well, the, the product is located here in, in Jira. This is a, like a clean instance I have just installed uh, today. Uh, has no other plugins, uh, but uh, Business Process Studio. And when you install it, you will have a new option uh, right at the top. With the three, three options available for help and how to get started and so on. And this is the, the option that you will need to, to use, okay? Uh, if you click here, you will be requested an administrator access because this is an administration tool. It's a tool that um, makes easy for you to do things on the administrative space uh, without all the complexity that you can have with using the regular administration uh, panel, okay? So this is why it's requesting administration uh, permissions, okay? And uh, this is the tool, okay? So it looks uh, like a, an integrated development environment, and this is more or less the, the reason of uh, why this product is here. When I started working for Systel, my, in my previous job, I was working for an American company called Embarcadero. They are the developers of uh, Delphi and Rad Studio, C++ Builder, and so on. It's like software development tools. So when I started in this company, uh, we started to, to on the Atlassian uh, consulting business, and we started to integrate uh, processes of uh, our customers uh, using Jira, okay? Uh, as you know, uh, Jira is not only uh, like a, a tool for software developers. It's, it's very open, it's very configurable, and you can do almost anything uh, you want with, with it. So you can actually uh, implement a process that you have on real life, which is a series of steps with transitions, with fields, with screens, and so on. You can do all that, and uh, you can uh, implement that process using Jira. This is what we were doing but using the regular tools that uh, Jira provides. So after like a couple of years in the company, uh, we realized that there is a space for a tool like this on uh, Atlassian Marketplace uh, because it makes very, very easy. And this is what I'm going to, to show today uh, to any process that you have in mind or any process on any company uh, to do it with Jira. So you can actually uh, digitize that process and gather all the information and know in what the status is uh, every every process and so on. So for this demo, what I'm going to do is to uh, implement a very simple recruiting process for, uh, for example, the human resources department for any company in which there is uh, other departments that request uh, to hire someone new and they uh, provide the information to, to for the HR department and then how to keep track of uh, the candidates that are interviewed for that position, okay? So, you know, this is uh, a bit uh, about the history. So now what I'm going to do is to create a, a basic process and explain a bit of the UI, okay? If you have any question, I have open here the, the questions and answers. You can stop at any time and ask any question you have, okay? Don't, don't worry about that. If there is any question that is um, too wide or so, we can uh, answer that question uh, at the end of the presentation, okay? 
So uh, I'm going to just to right click here and I'm going to create a new process. I'm going to explain the, the UI later, okay? Okay, so uh, here what we have uh, at the top are all the menus. As you can see, this looks more like a desktop type um, application, okay? With all the options that you have. I will uh, explain all these options later as uh, I advance in the implementation of the process. But basically you have like uh, the menu area, the toolbar area. Here you have the processes explorer where all the processes are going to, to be listed and also scripts. This is, uh, will be shown at the end of the, of the presentation. Here you have the workflow designer that uh, it looks and works very much the same as the workflow designer that you can find on, on Jira. And every time you select any item here, you have here a property inspector uh, that you can use to change all the properties for that specific item or even events. Okay, I will explain all that later. But this is more or less the, the UI that you will be interacting with. There is also a nice utility here, which is to maximize. So uh, you are not, you have the full uh, client area of the browser. So it's easier, I'm going to use that. But just remember that this is inside Jira. This is working inside Jira. This is a Jira plugin. And this is not like a third party service that you need to subscribe and this is just an iframe and so on. No, this is pure Jira. This is installed on the server and everything is uh, a store on that server, okay? Okay, so for this process, the first thing that I'm going to do is to name this process. and I'm going to name it as position. Okay, I click on the property inspector and I'm changing the name property of that process. This process is going to be simple in the sense that uh, the only steps that I need to do is to see if that uh, position, recruiting for that position is in progress or has been hired, okay? And here using the workflow designer, I'm going to uh, be adding all the statuses that uh, I need for my process. Just right click here and then I click here and then I select uh, what is the name of the new status. I'm going to use in progress, which is a default uh, um, a status name in Jira. So I'm reusing that existing status. I hit save, okay. Then I'm going to create another new status, which is going to be called hired, okay. And a last one that is going to be uh, canceled. For example, I'm going to use this status if, for example, maybe the position gets canceled at some point because that position has been covered by something else or uh, is not uh, needed any longer or whatever, okay? And now, if I click on a status using the property inspector, I can change, for example, the category, and this is going to be the, on the category done. As you can see, changes the color to green. These are uh, the standard colors in Jira for that. And then I'm going to change this also to uh, a, a final status. This is a status of uh, completed. Another property of statuses is the allow all transitions. But if you have already designed workflows in, in Jira, this uh, adds the transition all. That means that no matter the status, uh, the current status of the, of the ticket, you can transition to, to this status, okay? So as you can see, it's very easy. Uh, is a check uh, box property and um, that's it, okay? Uh, there are other properties of the process. I'm going to change, for example, the description. As you can see, it's a property editor. It's a different property editor, a multi-line. Recruiting position. And also I can change the icon of the process. I'm going to change it to, I don't know, this one, okay? This means that the ticket that the user will create will have this icon and we have this name, okay? What we are doing is to wrap uh, the concept of a process. This is something that Jira doesn't provide. It provides a lot of different entities, the workflows, the screens, the fields, all that, but uh, it doesn't provide the concept of a process. So uh, what we are doing with Business Process Studio is exactly that, to provide a unified interface to, to provide the entity of the, of the process. And now I'm going to create all the transitions between our uh, statuses. As you can see, 
uh, it doesn't work exactly as the workflow designer in, in Jira, the default one, because it creates the transition and sets a default name. So this is easier uh, if we attend, for example, the user experience, it's easier to add first all the transitions and then we can name them uh, as we want, okay? And I click on that transition and I'm going to uh, call this in progress. And this one, I'm going to call it uh, hire. Okay. Okay, so this is it for the first uh, design of our process. This is very much the same as in Jira because we can uh, design a workflow. But now what we are going to do is to set up what fields uh, we are going to use to store the information we want to have with that process, okay? If we expand the process, the process position, we are going to create the fields that we need to, uh, to store the information. In this case, I'm going to create a new field that is going to be of type, um, for example, I'm going to use the text field multi-line, okay? Uh, one note here, if you have uh, fields that you have bought on the marketplace and so on, all that will work, okay? Because what we are uh, doing is, is a layer on top of what you already have in Jira. So if you have plugins that are providing fields, field types, they will also uh, work here and will show uh, here, okay? I'm going to be naming this field, I'm going to be naming it uh, skills. I'm going to use this field in order to uh, know for the HR department, what are the skills that we are uh, looking for on that candidate. And now I'm going to create a new field that is going to be text field single line that is going to be a salary. This is going to be like the uh, salary, the max salary or the maximum salary that uh, we can pay to that potential candidate, okay? Okay, so we have our uh, workflow, the fields, uh, and now it's time to uh, design the screen, which is also here. As you can see, we are not going back and forth of, uh, through different screens, field configuration and all that. Everything is wrapped and is log logically grouped on, on the same entity, which is the process, okay? So now this is the screen. We have here all the fields. I'm going to be naming this screen. I'm going to be naming it position. And I'm going to uh, decide what uh, fields I want to show on my screen. This screen is going to be used uh, both for creating, editing, and viewing operations. All that is here, but I'm not going to explain that on this uh, demonstration. But what I can do is to remove fields that I, not, I don't need. If I right, cl right click on a field, I delete that field. Attachment, probably I don't need this also. Due date, I don't need it. I need the, the description. I need the assignee because maybe uh, this is assigned to a specific uh, person on the HR dep department to find uh, this candidate. The priority, I'm going to delete it also. Labels go up also, and time tracking also are not needed. And now in order to get these fields, the skills and salary into this screen, it's just a matter of uh, clicking here and dragging and dropping that field on, into the screen, okay? You can see it's quite easy to set what fields are going to be shown to our users. So I'm going to be placing the skills below the description, and I'm going to be placing the salary be, uh, below the, the summary, okay? So now we have the workflow, the fields, and the screen, or uh, all are uh, already designed on my process, okay? Do you have any question here? No questions? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is to uh, create a project. I'm going to create a project where my uh, process is going to uh, live in, okay? Usually what we do for our customers is to create project, uh, projects for the different departments they have. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is to create a new project for the HR department where all the processes for uh, the human resources department are going to be located. So I'm going to create a project. This is a regular project. I'm going to use this one because it's the, the minimum one. I'm going to be naming that uh, project HR, and that's it, okay? I'm going to be creating the project. That's it. 
Now I'm going to refresh this window in order to get that project actually on the drop down. So we can, what I'm, we are going to do now is to deploy our process to that project. So it's available. Okay. To do that, if you are uh, selecting a process here, you have a drop down in which you can see all the projects that you have in that Jira instance. So you can select the HR project and then you click deploy. As you see, the icon is very much the run uh, icon you can find on any development tool. Uh, because what we are going to do is to put that process into production. Okay. So clicking here, this is the wizard that you can find also in Jira. If there are uh, migrations to be done or anything to be done, all that is managed by Jira. So we are not reinventing the wheel uh, and it's guaranteed that everything is going to work because it's, it's the same code Jira is using to to do all this stuff, okay? So just follow this uh, wizard, okay? And this, then we have uh, the, the information here that the uh, deployment has been successful. If we are curious here, we can see all the operations that we are performing on the background in order to get that process live into the uh, HR uh, project. So now if we click on create on the HR project, uh, apart from the task, we have the position, okay? This position is the uh, ISU type that uh, we are creating with the process. Now we have the ISU type position, and here we have you know, the screen that we were designing that we can fill with the information uh, we want. Uh, in this case, in a company, any department of the company could create an issue to the HR department uh, with the issue type position and uh, asking, for example, I need a new Jira developer. Okay, the salary is going to be max uh, 40k euro. Here I can place the description. I need it uh, as soon as possible, etc. And then I have another field where I can list the skills: uh, Java, Jira SDK, Angular. You know, let's fix that. And then I can assign it that to anyone. Okay. Then when I click create, then that issue will be created. Okay. On the HR department with the request of any other department asking for a Jira developer with that uh, salary, those uh, skills and any description or whatever. Okay. This is the most basic uh, steps that you can do in order to uh, make digital a process that you have in the real world. Most uh, departments of, uh, of uh, companies we work for, they use Excel or they use uh, email or you know have a, a, a series of uh, systems, but they don't have any integration of uh, what the process is, uh, is actually done, how that is done, how uh, to store all the candidates, for example. And this is what we are going to do next. What we are going to do is to create a sub process in which we are going to gather all the candidates that apply for that position. And we are going to store the CV and any other information that uh, we, we might need, okay? Do you have any, any question? It's because usually this, uh, if you are used to Jira, this could be a bit mind blowing in the, in the sense that it's a bit different of what you are used to. Uh, but uh, the very first time you, you create a, a process, you realize the potential and how easy it is to manage this kind of, uh, you know, these processes using this tool. Uh, we have uh, companies, uh, I will try to show uh, something later, uh, in which is a huge process that you couldn't uh, manage that uh, process if it wouldn't uh, because of this product. Okay, I'm going to, to keep on with the presentation. Now what I'm going to do is to create a new sub process that is going to handle the uh, candidates when they apply for this position, okay? So in order to do that is on the node inside this process, which is called sub processes, and to create a new one, okay? In the very same way we have been doing in the past. And I'm going to uh, be naming this candidate, okay? 
this is going to handle all the candidates that apply to that position. Okay. And in this case, the, the workflow is a bit more complex because there are more steps. I'm going to be adding a new status initially. It's like the first contact with the candidate. Contact. I'm going to add a new one, which is a personal interview. I'm going to be adding another one, which is technical interview. And then is technical. Technical test. And then I'm going to be naming this hired. I'm going to reuse the, the same status. Another one which is called rejected. And another one which is going to be the cancel one. I'm going to be placing all these statuses here so you see how this works. Okay, press on interview. Cancel, first contact, technical interview, etc. Okay. So in this case, the first status is going to be first contact. It's not going to be uh, the default status open. So I'm going just to drag this transition here, and this status can be deleted, no problem. Okay. So whenever the the ticket is created, it will be set in first contact. After that is the personal interview then is the technical interview, then is the technical test, and finally could be hired or could be rejected, okay? I'm going to be setting the categories for these statuses. This is going to be done. This is going to be in progress, in progress, in progress, okay? And now I'm going to be adding all the uh, transition uh, between them, okay? And then from the technical test, we can decide if it's going to be hired. I'm going to be the, to, to make it more simple, I'm going to be just removing the cancel. I'm going to be adding the rejected status. We can reject this candidate from any state but the first contact. Okay. Uh, so I show you another uh, functionality here. I'm going to be sorting all this out. So there is a bit more space in the designer and then naming the transitions. This one is going to be personal interview. This is going to be technical interview. Oh, there, there is a question here from Frank Raitel. Uh, sorry if the name is, is not the right pronunciation. The question is, this needs your administration uh, permissions, right? So it needs creating issue types, a screen. Yes, yes, you need to be administrator because you are creating workflows and uh, you are creating uh, issue types and so on. So it's an administration tool actually, okay? This is going to be name technical test and this is going to be higher. And this one is going to be name reject. So what we are going to do is to reuse this transition so it's not only from personal interview, uh, it's going to be also from technical interview and technical test. Okay? So I'm going to be uh, using this button here, which is duplicate and reuse a transition. And then there is a new dialog that allows me to select the transition reject, the source for, uh, uh, status for that transition is going to be also technical interview and the target is going to be rejected, okay? And it's the same transition. So if later I change any property of this transition it will be uh, replicated on the, the other transitions. So now I'm going to create another duplicate of that transition. And this time it's going to be from technical test. Okay. So I actually can, I can reject that candidate from any of these uh, three statuses. Okay. I'm going to be sorting this out. So it looks a bit better. Okay. So this is more or less uh, our uh, workflow for any candidate. We contact the candidate, we perform all the steps uh, with uh, that candidate, and then we can reject or hire that candidate, okay? So now is, uh, oh, there, there is another question from Mikala Mayer. But can I use those after creation as a not admin? 
Yes, yes, that, that's uh, actually the, the goal. Any user with the right permissions on the project, uh, we are deploying the, the process, can use that process. You don't need administration permissions in order to uh, use that process. It's only to design and to create new processes, okay? So now we are going to do the same as before. We are going to create the fields and to create a new field. In this case, I'm going to create uh, this one, a single line. And this field is going to be for salary requested. This uh, to store how much salary this candidate is uh, requesting. And pretty much it in the sense that, for example, we can use comments in order to keep track of all the history. We can use the, the description to talk more uh, about the candidate and, and so on. And again, it's the same process. We have a screen here, which controls about uh, what fields the, uh, the final user of our process is going to, to see. And I'm going to name this candidate. I'm going to be removing, no, not this one, the security level. The attachment can be used in order to attach the curriculum vitae from the uh, candidate or any other information. Um, and delete this field, the description, as in it, priority, labels, and time tracking. And then I'm going to drag that field and I'm going to put it here, okay? So now uh, what I'm going to do is to deploy this process also to the HR, okay? Again, it's the same button. And this deploys not only the process, but also any sub process, okay? Again, successful deployment, etc. So now in, uh, remember that we created before uh, a ticket for a position that we were looking for, for a new Jira developer. So now what I can do is to create a sub task, okay? And now what I have here is the candidate issue type. This is a subtask issue type that is created so it belongs to the position. So it makes perfect sense in, in the logical way that most companies work for candidates. There is a position that is open and then we can create as many candidates as uh, we need in order to store the information for every candidate. And this is Mr. I'm going to use the summary for the name. It's the candidate one. Then uh, the candidate is requesting, I don't know, 45 euro. I can use the attachment in order to attach the CV or any other information, the description about the candidate, and then I can assign that to any other user. So that is responsible for that candidate to follow the process. If I click create, then I'm storing uh, inside this position issue type all the the candidates that are applying for that position and what is the status of them. This is very important because what I'm going to do later is to create a, a Kanban board in order to organize all this so it's easier for the HR department, okay? Okay, there is another question. Does this always create new fields or you can reuse existing fields as well? Yes, you can reuse existing fields and here if you create, uh, uh, if you right click on the fields, you can import fields and here you have all the fields that are available to the system. Okay, so you can add them to the process. So uh, you can reuse any field that you have for any process that you have, okay? Okay, uh, so now I'm going to be creating another candidate. So you see that this makes perfect sense. Candidate two, sorry, requested 39 euro. And that's it, okay? So, you know, this is very useful in the sense that we are grouping information that otherwise will be spread in spreadsheets or folders or, or in emails or, or whatever, okay? So uh, what I'm going to do now after this is to create a Kanban board. So uh, this is the way that we usually present the information to the final users. Final users, uh, normally they don't have to mess with this screen because usually they are not like computer savvy. They are like, you know, accountants or human resources or marketing. So our goal is always to present the information in, in the easiest way. And for them, the a Kanban board is, is very easy to use, okay? 
So for that, what I'm going to do, first I'm going to, to create a, a new filter. I'm assuming everyone here knows about this basic stuff, okay? So uh, I'm not going to, to detail much, much uh, about this. So I'm going to select all the tickets from the HR department for the type, uh, sorry, the type is going to be the candidates only, okay? So I have two candidates. I'm going to save this as uh, candidates. Then I'm creating a new board that is based on that filter. So I'm going to uh, feed that uh, Kanban bar using the filter I'm just creating. It's all local host on my machine. <laughs> so I'm going to create a new Kanban board and it's going to be based on an existing filter. Okay, any question? Did you plan to include an overview panel on the main ticket to check uh, one glance the fields attached to that process? Uh, he, Jake will search the result, but with all the fields necessary. That, that could be an interesting idea. So maybe if you want, what we can do offline is to discuss about that, okay? Uh, what we usually do, this is something that we are using ourselves uh, in order to, um, uh, as a consultancy product, for our users. So what we are doing is to get all that feedback and plan the next uh, features that we are adding to the pool based on that. So uh, what we can do is to discuss about that uh, functionality online, uh, offline and uh, probably we can implement it, okay? So I'm going to create this uh, board using that filter. I'm going to be naming these candidates. I'm going to use the filter candidates to be creating the board. As you know, initially the board is always set up with, uh, in a default way with the default columns and all that. So we are going to be customizing it a bit. Okay, this has been created. I'm going to be setting up this board in the way I'm, I'm used to, to, to work with it. The first one is about the columns. I'm going to be changing this in order to reflect all the statuses uh, I want to. Initially, this is the first contact. What I like is to have like a column per status, depending on how many status uh, I have. This is uh, the personal interview. And I'm moving this status here. Mm, I'm going to be changing this. This is like the technical interview. interview. Then I'm adding any one, which is the technical test. Whoa. Technical test. I'm going to be using this as done, so uh, we can uh, drag that uh, those tickets to be hired or rejected. Okay. So now back to the board. Okay. So this is what we usually present to the HR department. Okay, so if they, if they create a new uh, candidate for a position, as you uh, can see, Jira always groups the subtasks inside the main task. So it's very easy for anyone to understand that, hey, this is, I need a new Jira developer or any other title that is in the summary of the, of the task itself. And these are going to be the candidates for that position, okay? And this is the status of those candidates. So for example, if we move Mr. Candidate to to personal interview is as simple to drag and drop. For them, is very, very easy to understand. So they, they see it very clearly. And then they can be moving uh, that candidate from uh, one stage to the other, okay? Technical test or to done or whatever, okay? So uh, if they need to enter more information, they just click on the, on the candidate itself and also, as you know, we can customize this to look in the way they, they are used to. And we can, uh, for example, they can attach the uh, CV here directly and that's it, okay? So for them, moving from an spreadsheet or email or whatever to this kind of system is uh, usually they, they, they thank you a lot for that, okay? Do you have uh, any question? Because this is like the basic demonstra demonstration of the potential of this, this product. What we have been doing is we have like a, a process in mind um, that we are implementing inside Jira very easily with visual tools. And there is 
only one screen that we, we need to use. Uh, we don't have to go to the administration and we have to uh, go to the uh, field schemas or whatever. Okay? There are things that we can do that, for example, we can require the salary, the, that field, if we mark this as required, we set that to true and we deploy. Okay. Now, usually this wizard is just, if we don't make any changes that need migration, like a status and so on, this is very, very easy and very simple. Then now if I try to create a new uh, position, okay, now the salary is required. Okay, we try to create this issue, uh, you know, salary is required. As you can see, we are marking that field as required in a very easy way. There is no need to go back and forth and look for many different things, okay? If we want, for example, uh, if we, in a candidate, we are going to be, I'm going to close this. If we want to uh, force the user to enter a comment when they reject a candidate, what we can do is here on a screen, we can create a new screen that is going to be named, for example, comments. And uh, if we don't add any field, as you know, in Jira, uh, uh, an empty screen always has the comments field. Okay. So what we are going to do is on the re reject transition, we are going to set the screen for that transition to be the comments one. Okay. And now again, we deploy. Okay. And now if, uh, for example, this candidate, oh, sorry, if this candidate I'm going to be uh, rejecting the candidate, as you can see, the reject uh, screen is shown. Okay. So the, the user needs to enter comments about why that candidate is uh, rejected. You know, you know, processes can be very complex, very easy, and uh, you know, after this, what I'm going to do is to show more complex and more advanced uh, things. So, if you have any question now, we'll, is is the right moment so we can uh, answer them. There's one question in the Q and A box. Does this always create new fields, or can you reuse existing fields as well? I think I already replied that, but no problem. I can repeat that you know, on the fields. No, if you right click here, you can use the import fields option. So uh, you can select if you want to import a custom field, a system field or everything. Okay. And then uh, well, you just simply select the field that you want and import the field. And now that field is already available on the fields section. So you can drag it to a screen or, or anything. So the answer is yes. Now, can you show case the script section? Can you, for example, send out a notification to project role that the process changed and if there is something to consider? Uh, that is going to be the last thing I'm going to be showing because the scripts is like more advanced thing. Uh, thing. I'm going to be showing how that you can schedule a script to be executed at specific times. Uh, but in any case, the scripts are is, is groovy. Okay, so you know, implementing uh, what you say is a, a bit more complex. I'm going to be showing also how you can reuse exist, exist, oh, sorry, existing plugins that you have in order, uh, you know, like post uh, functions and all that, that already provide this kind of uh, can behaviors. So you don't need to write the script for yourself, okay? More questions about the, this section or I move to the advanced stuff? Okay. Okay, one of the things that uh, transitions uh, have, for example, if I select this transition, as you may notice here at the, at the top, uh, here you have the properties, but also there is uh, a section which are called events. And there are three events, okay? Uh, one is called on before execute, the other one is on execute, and the last one is on after execute, okay? This uh, matches the three statuses uh, by which a transition can happen. The on before execute is uh, the time for you to decide if that transition is going to be available to that specific user or not. Okay, which, what are the conditions that um, the user needs to, or the ticket or anything needs to match in order for that transition to be shown. 
to the user. Okay. Then we have the on execute, and I'm going to be uh, expanding all this later. Okay. The on execute is when that tra transition is executed, you can actually do something. Okay. For example, if you need to call uh, REST API, whatever, or do anything that you want to do on the moment the transition is executed, that is the time to do it. But you can prevent that transition from uh, moving the status of the ticket. For example, I could prevent this ticket from moving from open to in progress. Okay. This is like the validators in, in traditional JavaScript. Okay. These are the conditions and these are the validators. And the last one is on after execute. After the ticket has been transitioned to this status, you can do whatever you want uh, with it. Okay. Uh, so these are uh, like post functions if you are used to, to that uh, vocabulary in, in JIR. Okay. So, for example, on after execute, what we can do, and as you can see here, are all the things that JIR is actually doing when a ticket transition. These are the, the system. Uh, steps. If you are, uh, have edited at some, uh, at some point a workflow, you will see these are exactly the same. And this is compatible. If you make any change here and you go to traditional Jira, you will see that change there. Okay. But here it's easier. For example, if I uh, want to add something to happen after that transition has been executed, I can add a code event or a regular event. I'm going to be uh, explaining both. The first one allows you here to enter any groovy, okay? And here, if I expand that commentary, we have all the things that we can access here, okay? This is, uh, you will understand this if you have already uh, write some groovy script on, on, on GIR, okay? If not, this is the easier way because it's very easy to understand that after the transition has been completed, I can write any groovy code here to do whatever I want. If I want to uh, write into a database, or if I want to call a REST API with uh, the JIRA ticket in a JSON format and send it out, you know, all that can, can be done here, okay? And the other one, I need to be deleting this one, the other one could be most interesting to you in the sense that it, it's compatible with what you already have, okay? If you already have like uh, plugins that you have bought, uh, for example, in this case, I have installed the uh, Jira uh, workflow toolbox, okay? These are all the post functions that uh, Jira workflow tool toolbox provides to Jira. So you can use them as well. What we are not doing here is to reinvent the wheel and trying to, to uh, make a separate system. Everything that you already have will work. And this is important because it's not something that if you start using uh, Business Process Studio right now, you are not breaking anything that you already have. Okay, you can reuse anything that you have. Okay, and for example, if you want to add a comment to, to that ticket when that transition is is uh, executed, and you just use that uh, post function, it will have parameters or not. I don't know. Can remember, you know, it has a lot of parameters here that you can use uh, to, do, to tweak. You know, as a, a way, uh, a lot of uh, functionality already built in. Okay, and then you just click add. And that's it. Okay, then it will be shown here on the object inspector, on the property inspector. Okay, you see here, create a comment using nothing in this case, comments body. This is exactly the same as it will work on traditional year. Okay, another question for the code: event post function is possible to build up a pool of post function and reuse them, doing up with a duplicated code. This is something that we are working on uh, right now in the sense that you can include scripts inside other scripts in the same way, uh, for, I don't know if you know C and C++, you can include uh, headers and other uh, code inside. Uh, we are working on, on it right now. So you can actually uh, write once and reuse that uh, anywhere, okay? This, uh, at this moment, uh, we are working on that functionality. It's not available, uh, available yet on the marketplace, but will be like in, in a couple of weeks. Okay. And also you can decide what is the order in which these steps are going to execute. You can drag and drop, okay? So you are changing the, the order in which they will be executed, okay? And it's the same, for example, for on execute. 
Here we have the uh, field validator. This is what we are using in order to make easy for you to set fields as required. If you set them on the screen or you set them as uh, at field level, uh, we are using this validator in order to implement that. Okay, and you can add any other event, and these are these matches with the validators that you already have installed. If you are buying um, plugins that provide that, don't worry that you can use them. Okay. And on before execute, what you will have, sorry, is here. You can add a code event as well, but another event, okay, here, okay. These are the conditions, okay, to the transitions, okay. As you as you see, they, they work exactly in, in the same way. Uh, they work on Jira, but the interface allows you to group everything in, a, in an easier way, okay. Any question? Does this also take care of field context? Uh, yes, but uh, will be better to elaborate that offline because uh, that could be very broad in the sense that you know, if a field is available on different projects and different issue types and, and so on. So it's better we elaborate that offline. Okay. Okay, another thing that uh, we provide and is something that we are very proud of uh, is about a new uh, field type if you create here a new field move to advance is here the this one is the dynamic list uh, picker field okay if you create this type of field and to be naming this uh, dynamic you know, any name you want fields also uh, have events okay and this one as another event that is called on get list options. If you edit this field, what you can do is to return dynamically the list of options for that field. The traditional use case for this type of field is if you have a database where you have a store some information that you want to show to the user at this moment with other plugins like a script runner and so on, you have to create a arrays, a behavior, and so on and it's, it's quite complex and all that is outside that so uh, for us it's very easy because you have a new field that has an event that allows you to return what are the options for uh, that field sorry i need to be maximizing that okay so what i'm going to do here is to uncomment this this is a, a sample that, uh, so you don't need to remember what is the exact format and what I'm going to do here is to return these three options for that field. Okay, I'm going to be on the, the position screen. I'm going to be adding that field here. I'm going to be setting it here and deploying the project. So that's the dynamic field handle all existing values on edit when the option is no longer in the dynamic source. Uh, do you mean that if you change the dynamic and the value is already there? That value is a store there. So if you have a new value, the value, the, the old value will uh, still be there, okay? But you cannot sell it uh, again. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining myself properly. If you have already, that the value is a store in the field. If uh, the dropdown does not contain that value anymore, you cannot sell it, it but the field still has that value. So I'm going to be creating a new one position. So as you can see here, this is the dynamic field and these are the options that we are returning dynamically. So instead uh, that script, what you can do is to connect, you know that in Groovy you can connect to any database and to uh, fetch uh, information for any table and, and you can return that information in a way that is, is very easy for users in order to sell it, okay? This is the typical example. And this was, uh, this feature was uh, brainstormed uh, from an actual customer. Uh, they have a, an Oracle database where they are connecting different systems to, to it. And they have uh, like a list of, of um, uh, fabrics or manufacturers and sellers and all that. They, they that is like the center of the knowledge for them, the, the knowledge base for them. So what we are doing in that customer is, is 
using this field in order to allow them to select information that they are populating in Oracle. So they don't have duplicate information, okay? Any question? I'm going to be showing the scripts section here. Any question? Okay, at the same level of uh, processes, you have here uh, a node that is called scripts that you can actually create a new script. As you can see, it's a script uh, one dot groovy. So you can actually write groovy here and that code is uh, validated and executed here. But the nice thing uh, about this is that you can uh, schedule uh, uh, that uh, script to be executed uh, from time to time, okay? Uh, so if you set this enabled, the, that property enabled, then here you have uh, like a wizard or a property editor that makes easy for you to select uh, when that script is going to be executed. We usually use that functionality for generating reports in CSV format that is going to be consumed by a different system. Uh, but you know, can be used for anything. If you want to call a REST API to send information from time to time, you can do it. It's groovy. But the nice thing is that the interface allows you to have those scripts inside the server without having needing to have like SSH permissions to place them anywhere and to easily schedule them to be executed. If uh, even you can place here a cron expression, uh, so you are free to, to schedule that script at any point, okay? Okay, any, any question about the scripts? No? Um, I don't know if I can switch from this screen to other screen because I would like to show you a, a real life usage of this probe in a customer. Uh, they have like 500 employees and is, they are selling cars um, in the south of Spain. They have a lot of uh, uh, vendor places and they are using this probe and Jira in order to uh, implement all the processes to selling uh, vehicles, for example. Okay, this is, a, uh, this is a Jira instance. Uh, actually, it's the stage where we usually uh, write and make changes on the stage uh, system and then we populate that to the production one. And this is BPS. And I'm going to show you how this looks more in, like in a production system. So you can see all that. Okay, as you can see here, they have all the processes here that they have right now. It's in Spanish, okay, but in any case, VN is like new vehicle. Uh, this is the acronym for that. In Spanish, it's vehículo nuevo, okay. This is to uh, the license plates to get a new license plate. And this is the uh, process for a new vehicle. As you can see, it's quite big, right? <laughs> okay. Again, it's in Spanish, but uh, you know, allows us to maintain this kind of monster processes. Uh, we cannot think about uh, writing this kind of uh, products or processes uh, without BPS. Uh, we think it will be impossible to maintain because there is a lot of knowledge that you need to have on the different things that are uh, apart and separated without having the, the, the common concept of the process, okay? And here they have the scripts, as far as I remember. For example, this is uh, you know this uh, script and that is querying a database. And don't worry about the passwords because this is protected to a VPN. Okay. In any case, if we can uh, black this out when this goes to YouTube, uh, it will be better. Okay. And you know they have uh, different things here that uh, you can actually write uh, Groovy in order to uh, schedule uh, those. Uh, scripts in order to be executed from time to time, okay? Okay. Uh, there is a new question. Do you have a separate export for the process and build up config as code? I mean, clone the fields, the screen, and the, uh, uh, no, uh, but I think that is, is uh, you know, it's something that Jira is missing in the sense that as far as I know, and maybe I'm wrong or maybe you can help me and, and let me know if there is a similar product. There is not an actual product. There is 
one that we know of but needs uh, support from third parties uh, to integrate with their API that provides you an easy way to migrate from a stage environment to a production environment. So uh, what we do uh, at this moment is uh, to replicate everything that we do on the stage environment to the production environment. Okay? We are planning something but will be limited to what BPS is able to do. So it, will, it won't be complete. We don't have uh, at this moment the, the silver bullet solution in order to, to do that. Okay? So again, if you know any product that will allow uh, us to do that, would be great because maybe we can integrate with that. Okay. Yeah, but that one needs that the third party plugins intake, as far as I know, okay, I can be wrong. Uh, third party uh, uh, plugins uh, integrate with their API. Okay. If uh, a plugin is not integrated with uh, their API, uh, there is no way uh, for that, everything that you do on an environment moves to the other environment. Uh, if I'm wrong, please let me know because that will be great for me to know. Okay. Okay, any more questions? I have a question. Um, yeah. Can I integrate for all these Groovy scripts and everything, can I integrate an external version control? So Git or something in your EDE? Do you mean so the processes are under uh, version control? Yes. No, not no. at this time. No, because uh, what actually a process is, is a different set. I, I'm going to be sharing my screen again. Because for example, here, what a process is, is a bunch of different configurations that are already in Jira, okay? The screens, the fields, there is no like text that we can actually commit and allows you to make a diff uh, so you can create versions and roll back and so on. But in any case, it's a nice thing to be thinking of, okay? Because again, the, the pattern that we are trying to follow is uh, the same pattern that any development tool. So it's like that you have an integrated development envir environment embed into Jira uh, that abstracts all the concepts that uh, you are used to. So they are easier to, to do and easier to maintain, specifically easier to maintain because we have uh, some customers that they have approached to us because they have like, uh, you know, like a maze or you know, it's crazy what they have on their uh, Jira setup. So it, there is no easy way to maintain Agile uh, with a lot of changes, a lot of plugins, a lot of fields, uh, configurations, schemas, and so on. Okay. My question was more, um, I understand that um, as far as the Jira part of the, the process goes, but uh, the Groovy scripts that you are using, mm -hmm. they are also just text files somewhere. Or yeah. Where are they? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for Groovy, uh, it will be possible, yes. And yeah. it will be a nice okay. idea, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm taking note of that after this meeting. So thanks for that. So, uh, and a follow-up question, uh, if there are no questions from the audience. So you're all on the panel now. You can just open your mic if you want. Um, so uh, let's say uh, I, I create a fancy script or create a change in a, in a big process and deploy it to my Jira instance um, and something goes wrong. So what would a rollback scenario look like? A rollback scenario, uh, you uh, need to go to the traditional Jira administration. Okay. okay. But in any case, uh, you know that there is an issue type. If you delete the issue type, that will, won't be uh, available any longer on that uh, specific project. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I think the uh, version control part would be great to have it like for the whole process mm -hmm. uh, because you could basically then roll back just with the config as code uh, scenario. So you could basically have the whole development path of the process inside Git and roll back. Uh, yeah, we are, we are going to think about it. The your um, uh, suggestion about the scripts part that will be easier because our text files and you know uh, can be easily done. But for the rest, we will need to see maybe it's like an export a commit and then import back uh, any specific version that maybe will work. Yeah. And I and I also know a few people who would really like to be able to script the whole process. So basically, um, like plant UML or something. So mm -hmm. just for a Jira process, mm -hmm. um, because I know a few people who can script faster than they can plug mm -hmm. and play things. Right. Mm 
-hmm. So if you if your IDE uh, would just provide uh, the field names and everything, and then you can just write a script that is validated, mm -hmm. uploaded, that would be really cool. Yeah, do you mean, for example, we provide like a big groovy library with can functions for yeah. the specifics that we are showing like exactly. visually? No, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, so you basically translate translate the, 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 the issue types and the fields and everything that you mm -hmm. import from Jira mm -hmm. into some Groovy value, whatever that is. I don't know. I don't know Groovy. So mm -hmm. I don't know what that's called. But then you mm -hmm. can script basically with the field names and everything that you have. And you don't need a graphical interface at all. Mm -hmm. So, right. um, and you just, when, once you're done, uh, you can validate the script and test it and do stuff with it mm -hmm. and then deploy it uh, as a Jira. Right configuration, whatever. Right. Want to yeah, instead uh, using, for example, XML or JSON or whatever in order to export and import, yeah. what we can do is to use Groovy, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, don't, yeah. I don't know if nice you, uh, you probably know plant UML, uh, which is currently um, where you can diagram. So it's mm -hmm. not really a flow management, it's not really a process management describer, mm -hmm. but um, that allows you to script stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you have, of course, also the possibility to generate scripts. So if you just uh, want to do a process, you can, a uh, complex process, you can generate that script from somewhere. I don't okay. know. So uh, I know a few people who like to script better than to use a graphical interface. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you have the Groovy capability anyway in there, that uh, mm -hmm. would be interesting. Yeah, that probably that will solve like two problems. One is about yeah. the import and export with yes. higher capabilities than XML. Yes. And also the will allow users in order to write those scripts with bigger uh, and powerful functions that they can use. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you basically I, yeah. encapsulate the, the Jira part in, in a Groovy's DSL or whatever, mm -hmm. a domain specific language that just creates the Jira part and then runs the Groovy script part, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as, as you said, as an included function. So, mm -hmm. the scripts are still included and the Jira part is basically like in, in Botron, the configuration manager, it's basically just a number of configuration steps mm -hmm. that you run in, in, in via DSL that you have in Google. Right. So, right. and that would so, solve your version uh, control problem and everything because mm -hmm. that, that Groovy you could write in any IDE that you mm -hmm. use. So. Right. And you, you just provide the validators for the field names and field values and everything. Mm -hmm. so, right. I don't know how easy that is, but it sounds... I don't know. I would check with the developers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will let you know. No, but, but oh, I know... Sounds, I, sounds really good idea. Yeah. yeah. I know a few people who would like that, who would really like to script those processes instead mm -hmm. of painting them. Right. Especially from a technical perspective. Mm -hmm. Any um, other questions? Yes, I have some. Uh, do you have like some uh, cleanup mechanisms in place? So, for example, like you remove a, a sub process. I mean, in, in Jira, you normally need to migrate uh, the issues to a different workflow, mm -hmm. uh, or you remove an issue type. Uh, do you check or maybe uh, if it can be removed completely from the instance and mm -hmm. from index as well yeah we are, we are using the same um, process as you saw when we deploy uh, the wizard that you are, see, are watching is a, exactly the same jira uh, sorry the wizard you are seeing is the same wizard jira shows when you uh, migrate something so we are doing the same when you delete something those uh, issue types need to migrate to a different issue type okay so we are showing the same wizard Okay, cool. Do you, uh, when you like remove the last sub process, do you uh, uh, just uh, specify the uh, standard issue type you migrate them to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Task one, yeah. Or should task, yeah. Cool, thanks. I have always also questions. So, do you have a plans for? Uh, moving that also for the cloud instance as the cloud is the future? That is a question that we are getting from time to time from customers and potential customers. Uh, at this moment, the functionality that we need 
uh, is not available on the cloud API uh, because it's like low level advanced uh, API and it's not possible on the cloud, the cloud instance to use those APIs. So the answer at this moment is no. We would like to, uh, you know, because uh, at least uh, from my perspective, Atlassian is betting on the cloud a lot. So I don't know when, but you know, uh, everything should be on the cloud. So uh, we are looking for that, okay? But at this moment, it's, it's quite hard because they are not providing enough APIs, okay? Okay, thanks. So then I have another question. Uh, you will release this version that you showed today when, next week? This is when, uh, probably Monday next week. Ah, okay. So from Monday okay. next week, this yeah, will the, be... The only difference is about the that new uh, field type, which is, which is the dynamic list. Yeah. This is going to be the new feature that we are going to add next week. Everything okay. else that I have been showing is already available in the marketplace, so you can install the trial and, and play with it. Okay, so update available from Monday next week, and yeah. everything is already there, so you can test it tonight if you like. Jose, thank you very much. That was a very extensive demo. Um, I think we learned a lot about uh, process definition, in Jira and uh, doing it with your IDE. Um, looking forward to updates. And uh, thank you again. Have a very nice evening and hope to see you soon somewhere in the real, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Summit 22 or something. Yeah, <laughs> I, <don't well>, <laughs> I hope it's sooner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks a lot for inviting me. Uh, mm -hmm. has been great uh, because we are starting to, to market uh, this pro business. At this moment is uh, something for ourselves and we are trying to promote it for other customers. So, you know, it's, it's very nice to be able to show it to, to more people. So thanks a lot. Okay. Anything we can do to help. Thank you very much. And uh, see everybody again next Monday.